yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much uh, for this church, dear God, and I thank you for those that are faithful and come back on Wednesday, uh, Sunday night, dear God, and uh, those that were out soul winning with us, dear God. God bless them for their hard work, dear God, and I just pray that you would please bless our service tonight now, and uh, please just be with me as I preach on this subject, dear God. It's it's of uh, critical importance, and it's, uh, it's a subject that uh, is not a popular subject at all, and God, I just pray that you would please just be with me, fill me with your spirit. And give those that are here uh, ears to hear what you would have for them tonight. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> now, something that I'm going to preach on tonight, as I alluded to in my prayer, is not necessarily a popular subject. It's something that I haven't preached on in a while. And uh, it's something that, that needs to be preached on. And the first thing I'm going to do as I get into the sermon is to explain to you why it's so important that I preach on this subject. Albeit, it is not a popular subject. In fact, there are people who have come to this church and no longer come here simply because of this one thing that I'm going to preach on tonight. And there are many other people who have never visited our church simply because of the one thing that I'm going to preach on tonight. And there are yet another group of people who come to our church for a little while, and then I preached on this, and then they never came back again. But there's a reason why I'm preaching on this tonight, and it's something that I'll preach on continually until I die, and I have no plans of changing. And... Uh, let me ask you this. If I was going to hold back something that I know from the Bible, that I've studied in depth in the Bible, that God has shown me in the Bible, that's as clear as the nose on my face in the Bible, and I were to withhold that from you because of popularity, what would that make me? I mean, would that make me uh, the right kind of preacher? No. See, we were just talking about today uh, in the car. We were driving over here, and I was, I was thinking about a good friend of mine, Brother Reggie. I hadn't talked to him in a really long time, and I talked to him this week, and he's a really close friend of mine over in... Uh, uh, Chicago area, and I remember he taught me something. He taught me this. He said, uh, we were talking about praying for people that we'd won to the Lord when we were out soul winning, praying for them that they would come to church for the first time. And we talked about it, and he said, you know, Brother Steve, he said, he said I'm not really going to spend that much time praying that these people come to church. And I said, you know, why not? We want to have a really big day tomorrow. We want to pray that these people come. He said, you know, I'll pray for them to come. But he said, you know who I'm going to pray for to come? He said, the people who come every week faithfully, I'm going to pray that they're there tomorrow. And he said, I'm going to pray that God blesses them. And I'm going to pray that uh, for their health, and I'm going to pray about their job, and I'm going to pray about their family. He said, I want to take care of the people that we've got. Because he said this, he said, why would God send us more people if we're not taking care of the people that we've got? That's what he said. And so he said, we want to reach other people. We want to win souls. We want to get as many people to come as we can. But let's remember who the faithful people are. And let's give them priority in our prayer life. And let's give them priority in everything we do. And I remember he told me that. And I thought about it. And I thought about it. And I thought about it. And I said, you know what? He's right about that. We ought to take And, and so as a preacher, my, my biggest goal and my biggest job is to serve you. Rather than somebody out, some theoretical person that might come to our church someday or might have, would have, should have, could have come here. Hey, my job is to preach the whole counsel of God, the whole Bible, to those who want to hear it. That are here tonight that say, I want to know what the Bible says. I'm going to preach to you what the Bible says. Popular, in season, out of season, nope, doesn't matter. Uh, this is what we're going to preach anyhow. Now, there's a reason why I'm going to preach on this. and I'm preaching about the tribulation tonight. Okay. Now, this chapter deals with this subject a little bit, and I want to show you the first verse, and I want to show you why I'm going to preach on this. It's the same reason why Jesus preached on it. Look at verse number one. It says, These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. Why is Jesus preaching this sermon? Well, look down, if you would, at verse number uh, four. But these things have I told you. We're going to see another reason. That when the time shall come, Ye may remember that I told you of them, and these things I said not unto you at the beginning because I was with you. Now flip over, if you would, in your Bible. Uh, keep your finger there, though, but flip over to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. Keep your finger in John 16. And look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. And uh, while I'm turning there, but in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, the Bible says in uh, verse number 1 of 1 Thessalonians 3, Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone, and sent Timotheus our brother and minister of God, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ, to establish you, 
Okay? So he sent another preacher to them to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. That no man should be moved by these afflictions. For yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. For verily when we were with you, watch this, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass, and ye know. So Paul sent Timotheus to the Thessalonians because he said, I didn't want anybody to buckle under the pressure, to be moved by these afflictions, to be shocked when these kind of persecutions and afflictions and tribulations came, he said, I sent Timotheus to establish you and to comfort you. And he said, even when we were with you, we told you before that you should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass. And he know, look back at John 16. He says here, these things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. Verse 2, they shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. Look at verse, uh, let's skip to the last verse. I don't want to spend all night in this chapter, but it says in uh, verse 33, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Now, we know that Jesus Christ in John 16 is not talking about the great tribulation. Because he's talking to his disciples that died a long time ago. But he was warning them about the tribulation that they would face in their life. Okay? He was warning them because he didn't want it to come upon them unawares. Because if it would have come upon them unawares, they might have been uh, shocked or they might have been moved by these afflictions. Paul knew and Jesus knew that if people knew to expect what was coming, they could be more spiritually and emotionally prepared for it and ready for it. And it wouldn't throw them off. It wouldn't get them out of church. It wouldn't get them out of the ministry. So he said, I've got to warn you so that you won't be offended. Paul said, I'm sending Timotheus to warn you, to establish you, to get you firm and grounded, and, and also to comfort you about some of the things that you're going to go through. Mm -hmm. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, the Bible says. But in John 16, there's another interesting thing before we move on. Look, if you would, at verse 21. It says, A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow. It's talking about a woman in labor. The pain and the sorrow associated with it, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. Now, do you believe that one day we will see Jesus again? Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus Christ is coming again. The second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, we may uh, die before that, and our body will die. Of course, our spirit and soul will never die. We have eternal life. But our body will die maybe before that, and we'll go up to be in heaven with the Lord. But if Jesus Christ come back, comes back in our lifetime, we will see him again. But let me tell you something. The joy that's going to be experienced when we look up in the clouds and see Jesus Christ coming in the clouds with power and great glory, that joy is going to be prefaced by sorrow and travail and tribulation and then Jesus Christ coming. Now, now, now let me ask you something. Have you ever heard somebody say this? And, and look, let's just be honest tonight. Let's just open the Bible and just honestly take it for what it says. All preconceived ideas gone. Have you ever heard somebody say this, Jesus could come back at any moment? Put up your hand. You heard somebody say that. Of course. I mean, we've all heard that hundreds of times. Yay, maybe even thousands of times. Mm -hmm. Jesus could come back before this service is even over. He could come back tonight. He could come back right now. That fast. But, but is that true? Now, I challenged a, a preacher on this recently. I said to him, I said, can you show me where it says that in the Bible? He said, well... No man knoweth the day or the hour. He said it could happen at any time because nobody knows when it's going to happen. And I'm going to give you uh, both answers that he gave me. And we're going to, let's examine them with Scripture. Well, well, when this man told me, he said, well, no man knoweth the day or the hour of Jesus Christ's return. Therefore, it could happen at any time. I said, well, let me ask you this question. Where does it say that in the Bible? And he said, I'm not sure of the chapter and verse. And I said, well, let me help you. Because I do know the chapter verse. And let's go there right now. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter number 24. Now Jesus says this, and it's, it's found in a few chapters, but it's the same statement. It's from the same sermon by Jesus. The same sermon is recorded in Matthew 24, also in Mark 13, and also in the book of Luke. And so look at Matthew 24. Let's examine the statement here. 